D4 to start off. I like E3. Blocks the bishop, but that's kind of the point. And as soon as E5 is threatened, let's just go ahead and uh, secure that square for ourselves. All right. Bishop f5. Again, if I can play this move before he gets there, great. But on the previous turn, if I had played bishop d3, then e5 would have happened, and that kind of ruins the, the setup, you know? Getting ready to castle. We got the e5 square. We'll go probably c3 as well. Don't mind castling. Do this. And again, I've talked about how taking here is not really what we want to have. So I'm going to play C3. Eshi, I'd love to, buddy, but doing a series where we're just playing the stone wall. So it's not going to be a thing for right now. I appreciate your energy, though, bud. Bishop D6. So yeah, I've talked about how, like, Knight D2 we want to do, but Bishop's just hanging, right? Like, Knight D2... Bishop just hangs, and, you know, we need to basically move our queen before we bring the knight out. Taking here is absolutely not, not an option. So we're going to go queen c2. Queen e2, again, I'm not a huge fan of the, uh, the knight getting to e4. It can still go to e4. Nothing stopping him, but knight d2 at least will threaten the, the, the e4 square. So if he plays knight e4 and I play knight, knight d2... I'm attacking it three times. So he'll have to move it, which is kind of nice. All right, castles. Now, although this is tempting, he'll take it and play knight e4. So I want to do this move to stop knight e4. I think we're getting used to that. Stonewall is always like 10 times more effective if they don't get their bishop out. Obviously he has, but you get my point. Okay, so he's moved the knight. I mean, I think he's trying to play this move. The move h3 really stands out to me. Knight g5, he has f5 anyway, so I'm not a big fan of that. Knight e5 can absolutely be played though. And pretty much no matter how he takes it, I mean, we're always going to take with the f pawn. So I'm looking at knight e5 and I'm looking at h6. Both moves look good. I think this is always a good move to play. I mean, if he goes back here, great. If he goes back here, I'll probably still play knight e5. I think I like my game. They will be, uh, they will be, yeah, uh, bearded. All right, let's throw this guy in. It's been, been enough talking about it, not enough doing it. As you can see, our username is uh, very inconspicuous here. People have no idea what opening I'm going for. Wone stall. All right, always with the F pawn. You guys know the drill. Um, and probably the next move would be something like E4. It's a very common follow-up. Because once we move this pawn out of the way, then all of a sudden the bishop can breathe. So, I am looking to move the pawn here. Um, kind of a little bit funny, but uh, pawn here takes, queen takes, knight g3. Looks a little unpleasant. Pawn takes, takes, knight takes, which should be great. It actually has knight takes on e5, which is causing me to pause here. <laughs> <laughs> because I I think that actually is a that actually is a uh, working tactic. So I want to play e4 really badly, but the way the pieces are organized right now, I'm not actually sure it's possible. I'm definitely thinking about g4. It's not the best move I I know for sure, but it could be played just to uh, kick the knight and then play e4. Moves like king h2, rook f3, all just to play this move. 
admittedly do look quite tempting. So these are these are the things I'm thinking about. In order to be the most direct, I think I'm going to get uh, sucked into the temptation of G4. But really what I want to do there is E4, to be honest with you. Um, for the most part, E4 there will be a... Uh, will, will be your move, but Black kind of set things up that he had a little tactic there. I'm not about to fall for that. Knight takes E5. He might... I might be playing a 900, but can't take him lightly here. Yeah, Rook F3 was a good idea as well. Benja them in. I like that move too. I was thinking about it, but like I said, I just got suckered into the temptation of g4. Bishop d2, rook's doubling here, and then again, we have this idea to reroute the bishop. We'll go here. I don't really care about that move. f6, I don't think there's been an f6 move the entire time that we haven't, uh, that we haven't taken, so it will definitely be taking it. Double. If he takes here, I can actually throw in queen e6 check, which is nice. Yeah, the 900 set up that tactic. But hey, gotta put some respect on these 900's names. Takes, and although both moves are good, Queen E6 I think is the best. Rook F7 can be taken. And after we take it back, you know, e4 is is pretty much the next move. Opening up this bishop. Um, or maybe getting the rook down there as well. If e4, it looks like this knight is coming to g6. Not sure there's anything anyone can do about that. Let's go here. Knight g6. And knight, knight here is an idea. At h4, there will always be rook f7, so not, not too concerned. I would love to have this bishop on g3, but for now, I'm just going to push once more. Ooh, I like that move there, buddy. I like the energy behind it. Let's keep pushing, though. I think we're just going to send the pawns. He's been playing well. Yeah, these, these should be too much. These should be too much. Okay, Rook F2 is just a nice, simple, nice safe move. Simple and safe, though, isn't the vibe. Once again, the Stonewall, I mean, we really haven't made a single move on the left side of this line, like anywhere on the A and B files. We just don't touch that side of the board. That's just not, that's not what this opening is all about, plain and simple. I think we have a uh, good looking move here, Bishop H6. I mean, if he takes it, Queen takes, threatens mate on H7, and Queen G8 to stop it, we have Queen F6, so. I think that more or less gets the job done. Ooh, and he's gone c4. That should be getting him mated here. We have check, king moves, and honestly, any rook move that protects the bishop will be good enough because it, it will deliver mate. So let's choose the, <laughs> the, the move furthest away from the king. The most satisfying, obviously. And once again, we have a king hunt. Um, thought that uh, Mark Chris here played pretty well. Like, I really wanted to play e4, but takes, knight takes, knight e5 is a devious tactic by black. Actually would have been very strong. And if this move, then knight g3. So e4 was the desirable move, but not the move I was able to do. Nevertheless, I think g4 was okay. Not the best move, but it was okay. Knight g3 was a blunder. But in the opening, again, we don't have the best position to start off, but it's pretty good. Right? We'll get the knight into e5 there. 
We went for c3, queen c2, so we can play our knight. And notice how I didn't play this move. Because now, let's say he plays knight e4. And I go knight d2. I'm not threatening anything. He can castle. Right? I'm not threatening to take this. So he can leave this here the entire game. Kind of annoying for me. Whereas if my queen's on this side, I'm actually attacking this square. So I was thinking like here, you know, now he can't actually use it. And I can play knight e5. So that's kind of the idea. You know, we're at, we're at the basic levels of trying to understand the stone wall. There are some more advanced themes and specifics in the opening we're going to get into and going to have to remember. Um, but for, for right now, for just starting out, I think the, the simplest is to just go for, for this. Now, the stone wall is something that I might start off this game intending to play a London. Right? But then... You know, they play d5, and it's like, well, I'm not going to set up a stone wall if my opponent maybe can bring the bishop out. But if I play d4 and my opponent plays e6, well, all of a sudden, I feel a little bit more comfortable maybe playing this, knowing they're probably playing this. And I could play f4. Now I don't have to deal with this bishop. So the stone wall is probably not a great weapon to use every single game, but it's a nice thing to know how to play. And then if you see favorable things in your opponent's setup, especially a move like e6 early on to block the bishop, then I think the stone wall becomes really strong. So your bishop on d3 is uh, unassailable. But yeah, this, this helps a lot. So we'll still be playing the stone wall with bishop f5, of course, but it obviously works the absolute best if you can secure your light square bishop on this diagonal. It's just so much better. Well, with the black pieces against d4, we're going to start for sure with uh, d5 here. And I'm going to go for e6 to take back. It was a3, we'll go c6. And for example, I can continue to disguise things by playing a move like bishop d6. And only now maybe play f5. He takes. We're definitely taking with the e pawn. That's why we have it there. So I've talked about this before. If I play knight d7, I stop knight e5. If I play knight here, then maybe knight e5 happens and f4, and it's kind of gross. Because white took here, I have a nice option, which is, you know, if I play knight f6, I allow this, not great. If I play knight d7, bishop d3, and I can't play knight f6 because of the pawn. But here, I have another option, which is I can play queen e7 and just cover that square like that. Plus, this is always going to be a decent move for me anyway. Thanks for the prime there, Sam Panache. Okay, knight f6, castle. Of course, we've got this knight sinking into the e4 square pretty soon. e5 is covered he goes knight g5 he's not really doing anything with this move a lot of people do it um, it doesn't really threaten that much i'm just go gonna go ahead and pop in with the knight hitting this guy in h5 we always have g6 and i want to do this early because i i feel like uh you know castling is a good move but i like forcing the issue with this knight yeah f takes Hitting the bishop, and look at this beautiful pawn structure. Look at these beautiful bishops. Look at this open file. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. All right, bishop d2. Can't tell if he wants to try to castle that way or not. 
Queen h4 is tempting to just kind of weaken things over there. Uh, of course, bringing the knight into the game makes a lot of sense. Probably some combination of the two is, uh, is what I want to aim for. I actually want him to castle, so I'm not too interested in going here. Because then I, then I feel like he might not castle. So I'm trying to think uh, think how we want to do it. So we'll go here. Um, you know, castling right now would lose the game, which is always, always nice. I'm also threatening mate. And if he goes there, I'll drop back and threaten mate again. If he castles or plays rook f1, I mean, whichever, then I think bishop h3 is quite tough to handle because moving over would again drop that f2 pawn and essentially lose the game. Big fella. I sense some energy towards my king here. Why else would he sack a knight like that? Maybe he thought he was losing here. Okay. Some some ideas here, some trickery. I can't really get my queen in here to give me. Of course I can win the rook. But the queen takes back and uh, stays protecting this pawn, so... It's good, but it doesn't do that much. Um, this move is mildly annoying. Like, like I want to prevent it kind of annoying. This diagonal is also bothersome, so I think what we might do... By the way, I'm in no rush to take this because if he moves it, he always loses the game, so... I'm not really, uh, I'm not really dying to take it. Just move this. Okay, d5. We'll handle that bishop move, I think, by going here challenge or the bishop attack rather by going here challenge the bishop if he takes knight takes we're bringing our pieces into the tender squares would love to move this king out of this diagonal that's the last move i need to do and then then my position feels good we'll play rook d8 maybe knight f3 all right He's tossed the pawn up. Um, I think I am going to take here. He's decided to take, but unfortunately for him, he's going to get mated because this is a nice mating pattern to know. Basically, the rook is going to go to f1 no matter what. The bishop supports it. I only need to just bring another rook to make it happen, and the king is kind of caged by his own pawns, so... Can just pre-move that. En passant is forced, so of course we had to take that one when he played f4. GG. That was a quite a good stone wall, I want to say. It just couldn't have gone any better for us. Why was it so good? I talked about how strong the stone wall is when this bishop doesn't develop and they block it in i mean that's exactly what happened right as soon as e3 i mean f5 came after so what i'm saying is that i think it's possible when you're playing the stone wall to try to reveal as little as possible about your intentions because if you play f5 your opponents are like okay there's you know clear weaknesses on the dark squares. They might play bishop there, knight there. 
Now, obviously, if I play c6, they can still play this, but when, when people see these moves, I mean, this is just a normal opening for black. Nothing strange going on. Bishop f4 is actually probably not a good move here for white. Not at all. We can play this. When people see c6, this is like, you know, semi-slav or slav vibes where black can actually protect and keep the pawn. So white sees that and goes e3. Like, okay, hang on. I'm not, I'm not blundering a pawn here and having you keep it. And now, because we've seen e3, I feel way more comfortable playing the, the, the stone wall. Of course, I'm going to be playing it every time. But what I'm saying is uh, it's a great weapon to maybe not play every single game, but bring out when your opponent plays into a move order that works out for you. That makes the stone wall even better. Because this, this uh, obviously it ended well, but this opening was tremendous. White can't use this square, and I've got the e4 square, so. White was already in serious trouble here, and black just is much, much better. All right, d4. Happy to get d5. We do see a London system. I'm gonna play e6. I can still play this move, so for now, I'm just going to uh, save it. I don't need to play it right away. But as soon as I see one of these moves, I, I will. So right now, if I played f5, I think he would play knight e5. Maybe he doesn't have to, but he could, and then play f4. So I'm going to start with knight d7. Taking control of this square, my next move is f5. And it's just in time, because he might have been able to play e4. And now he already can't play his knight d5. This is a dream for me. Castle, knight d4. And he doesn't have knight e5 himself. Right, castle, castle. Seems fair. A4. I don't know what the queen side is. You know, we don't we don't play on that side of the board in this opening. <laughs> queen side, you say? Get that out of here. All right, C4. So we're gonna need some uh, some new plans, which is kind of fun because. Usually they they either take or I don't know something happens that we've seen before, but for the first time, this bishop can't really develop because the knight needs to be there to watch that square, and of course we don't want to take. And our knight isn't being captured, so we want to just leave everything as it is. If I play g5, takes takes knight takes g5, probably not my favorite thing. Um, I'm gonna start with rook up to f6, maybe getting my rook over to h6 or g6. It is uh, Captain Obelisk, but that's like trading your light squared bishop in this opening is so, you're not gonna need that for like 500 more rating points, I bet. I think the stone wall is just effective enough at these levels probably up to 1500 or so just playing full center and king side attack and using this bishop pretty much like that all right he's gone c5 we could go in either direction this way it does allow him to play knight e5 it's technically not a good move because of knight c5 but queen c7 does just stay on that square and also on h2. B4. Hey, what he's doing makes a lot of sense. It really does. E5, now that there's no pressure on this pawn because he played C5. E5 is always a, a good idea. I'm going to go for a serious attacking option, which is Rook H6. 
you know, not so uh, not so conspicuous here. And he's thrown the knight into the middle. Well, it's very much a free pawn, um, so we should probably go ahead and take it. Nothing more to it. Knight here will once again defend h2, but we were just in that position, and he had a, a pawn on d4. So this is this is only good for me. <laughs> Can't complain here. Queen c7 staying on h2 looks nice uh, because of maybe g5, g4. But going to f6 does look kind of attractive as well. I'm trying to decide which one I like. Both look very, very good. Let's go here. I think this one might work out in the short term a bit better, but long term, I like this move a lot more. Better diagonal. I can still get to the king side. G5, G4 is still happening. And now that my knight's gone from D7, don't forget about this plan. I'm bringing this rook over. Okay, he took, so I definitely wish my queen was here now. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, but I think we'll still manage. Knight d4, queen h4, h3, e5, hitting the knight, and then bishop takes h3. Probably leads to force mate. So yeah, queen h4, this move is forced. And e5, hitting the knight. And everything should be forced here. This is just attacking 101. Notice how the bishop covers the square the knight might want to move to. The pawn covers that square. And knight e2 will just sacrifice. And h2 and h1 are both checkmate. It's impossible to guard both of them. So it's funny, our worst piece on the entire chessboard for pretty much the entire game gets to deliver the fatal blow. Bishop takes h3. Let's take h3. I think that was the key. Bishop takes h3, and we'll take our queen h2 mate. Well, I think the best. Uh, I think the best thing I could say about the stone wall is that you know, if you look at how it starts in the opening, as a London system player, it it's like infuriating. There's no way that when you play London, that your goal is to be like attacked ruthlessly like this. So at least you can play it against London system players. And even if they have a good position, it's not going to be the position they wanted. I, I take solace in that. I really do. It's like when people play a certain opening, you know, they're going for a certain setup, a certain way to play. And if you can just prevent them from doing that, it just feels good. That's like a, an accomplishment already. It doesn't matter if maybe you've given up a little bit more of an advantage. You just, you know the way they want to play. All right. This win, if we can get it, is for the coveted 950 rating. After this move, we want to stop the move E5 from happening. Bring our bishop out. Of course, we would love to see that move. That is like the chef's kiss. But any move will do. It's castle. Alright, 
Got our setup here. Of course, we're looking at knight e5. Of course. Knight to h5. Wow. So hang on. If I play knight e5, what are you up to over here? Like, what's going on? Knights on the rim are dim. And f6 is going to enable me to prove that in front of our great audience here. Your knight has no squares. And it's just going to be taken. And then mate is going to be coming. We've only played 12 moves so far. My opponent's facing mate in one which only looks like it can be prevented by undoing the exact move they just made. Oh, it's only 12 moves. This opening is unstoppable. <laughs> Guys, it is the opening. Remember, Rating is just a number, a social construct. This is about the opening. That's where these wins are coming from. That's nothing to do with my opponents being 950. It doesn't have to do with me being a grandmaster. This is all about the opening itself. The stone wall is getting these wins, whether you like it or not. Go ahead, try for yourself. It'll be just as easy. Okay, D4. Ooh, interesting. I want to say this move is actually possible, so I'm <laughs> I'm gonna start out by playing f4. Start out by playing f4. Dr. Lord Mayonnaise with 50 gifted subs. Thank you to Dr. Lord. That looks like uh looks like Dr. Lord is just saying hi to Jeff by the looks of it. Is that a uh quick 10 Cinco's for Jeff? go we got our setup here bishop out knight d2 oh, he's got my knight control that's for sure credit to him well, thanks very much dr lord a 50 bomb and i'm not mistaken dr lord mayonnaise has thrown his update show suggestions into our discord thank you very much dr lord for taking the time okay we have finally gotten a stonewall where they just don't let us play 95. this is great you know we finally get to experience it in the flesh, what is it like when we can't actually put a knight on e5? Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Can't play our opening. But guess what? If the pawn is there, they're not actually controlling this square that much, which is a good thing. Good thing in general, you know. This particular case, when I see this, I think it's a little slow. So I think I'm going to be able to immediately use the F file. But if that pawn was on E6, I would probably go for this. Maybe go for E4, take this full center, keep pushing. If my knight can't go there, maybe I want to even push my pawn there. Because I've got these two pawns, which is good control over the center. But I see this move, I'm probably going to go for F5 and see if I can immediately open things up. He's saying no. I think you guys can probably appreciate that I... I'm saying yes. Open it up. Now, what is the most devious way we can reach H5? Remember, we don't want to be too obvious here. Let's focus. Let's focus. What is the trickiest way we can get to H5? Remember, knight here, we're dealing with a 900. He could take with the knight. We have to be clever. His next move is going to be this. His next move is going to be this. We know that. 
or it's going to be this. So the point is we have to make moves that are going to entice him to react. We can't make moves that look like they do nothing because then he's going to move the bishop. Knight h4 is too obvious. You guys are thinking basic, basic, basic. We're going to start with bishop a6. Now, when he takes on a6, he's going to start noticing that there's a rook hanging on f1. We're going to guard our rook. And then we're going to hit him with the checkmate. Like I said, you gotta think outside the box. You gotta get these 900s where they least expect it. There we go. You guys would have all failed. Way too obvious, knight h4, knight e5. No, 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 it's just, you gotta make sure you lure them in. You gotta lure them in. Bishop a6, create another thing for him to see. There we go. We lured him in. Knight d2, I'm just protecting my rook, no big deal. Queen h5. I tell you, a lot of us would have rushed, you know? Gotten ahead of ourselves. Knight h4. Wow, so high energy. But guess what? Our opponent would have found a way to not get immediately mated. And the satisfaction would not have been there. So I think we learned something today. If your opponent does not let you play knight e5, they will lose in 11 moves by checkmate. We have one game as reference, but currently that correlation is absolutely true. And until we have more information, that's what I'm going with. Like I said, nice game there. Got a quick little checkmate. Let's jump into the next game. And let that be a lesson to all 900s out there, to all 1000s out there. Do not prevent me from putting my knight on e5 in the stone wall because I'm going to get you. e4. We've already seen how effective e6 is uh, against this. Exchange. Now, if we go here and then play f5, and then knight here, we might get checked. So the first move we're gonna do is f5. Important move. We wanna get the knight out first. Let's bring the knight. Now we have an option. We can play bishop e7, right? In order to, uh, in order to get castled there. Now we can also play bishop d6 and meet this check with knight e4. So we do have some options. Bishop b7 or bishop d6. Obviously, bishop d6 is more tempting. Immediately getting the knight into e4 and asking our opponent how he feels about that one. Stonewall is far too strong. Just put a knight here. Look, we're already winning. It's that easy. All right, let's develop our bishop now. All you have to do if you're under a thousand is just put a knight there supported by two pawns and like 90% of your opponents are just gonna take you. That's just how it works. On d5, I always want to take with the e pawn. On e4, I always want to take with the f pawn. That's th those are the general rules. Very uncomfortable here. Okay, so he's gone queen d3. Good solid move. Try 
trying to think about the quickest way to end the game. Of course, bishop takes f3, and queen h4 is tremendous. It is a great, great move. But is there better? Is there better? I think we can all see that this will result in an immediate KO. Isn't it unstoppable? Not quite. There's F4 to reckon with. Now there's F4 to reckon with here, but I, I'm banking on the fact that it's a little less likely for F4 to happen when there's a rook behind it. So we do get checked. We're gonna move towards the center. Always move your king towards the center. Important rule to follow. He's got two pieces out. How tricky can he be? He's got moves, but oh boy, does he have to find them. F4. And I credit him for doing so. That is a nice looking move, my friend. Stopping the checkmate idea on H2. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to start creating more threats. Let's see what I can do here. Bishop H3. I'm thinking bishop here, you know, rook e3, queen d1. If bishop here, uh, I don't really know if we're actually mating him there. You know, he's kind of running away. So I'm, I'm a little bit less sold on that. Bishop h3 at least has a an immediate threat. So let's go bishop h3. Also keeping the king in a box here. That's a maiden two. And of course a nice good move for me at any point. It's just some knight move allowing the rook to come over. Nice move. Queen here Still good, because I'll take this. But after he takes on h3, I don't think I'm actually mating or anything there. So I'm going to start by moving the knight. I'm liking the defensive effort from GFST. I think he's doing a great job. Okay. d5. Now he might be in a bit of trouble here. So after d5, I'm going to start with knight d4 because I know he can't take me. That's mate, remember? So that, that move that he made may be costly. Because we know that this is game over if he doesn't have the queen to block. He's on e4. That might not be the best move there, buddy. Check. He knows that is uh, GG, as they say. Check. It's 
stop torturing the poor 900. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you guys were playing him, I would want you to do the same. If he was playing one of you, I'd want him to do the same. You see, he's got the hang of it now. Rook takes e3. I think there's only one thing to do. Check. Just had to make sure he got some material on the board. It couldn't have been worse than that for him. It really couldn't have. Some people ask me, how do I sleep at night after doing stuff like this? We have an emote for that. Bedge. Like a baby. There we go. GFST. Hey, he put on a defensive clinic. Not only because the game lasted 39 moves before I could deliver mate, but because even after a pretty nasty position here, he still made it work. And of course, he had a few good defensive moves, but look how quickly the stone wall is just working in my favor here. 94. I mean, we're not talking about a sizable advantage here for black. I'm forcing the stone wall with these moves. But they just take it, and then all of a sudden, black's completely winning. They always take. All right, we got the white pieces. A little bit easier to set things up. We'll see what opening he goes for. He goes d5. Let's go with e3. All right, now... He's ready to take this way. Uh, sorry, we're ready to take this way. E takes. So even though C3 is a good move here, and I, I might even play it, um, when he takes, we're not taking that way. We're taking that way. All right, let's challenge the bishop, as we have been doing. All right, he's going to go ahead and lose a piece. Which is a great start to our stone wall. Yay. Go stone wall. You don't see that every day. Oh, a six move win. A six move win. I'll take the piece. Look, Stonewall's working out. I expected him to take or maybe go e6. All good stuff, but bishop g6, f5. 
tough. He just walked into a, not like an opening trap or anything, but certainly a uh, an unfortunate series of moves to end up here. All right, E3. Bishop f5. Boy, he's quick with it. He's playing the reverse London. All right, he's trying to get that knight in there. Going to have to deny you. F4 coming next. go and here's our stonewall set up and guess what there's no 94 coming in we want to get castled remember when we castle kingside it makes him feel more comfortable castling kingside it's like oh we're castled on the same side okay i'm not going to be attacked but we castle kingside and we can still rook lift we can still push our pawns we can still attack so it's a nice a nice feeling Holy smokes. He brings the knight back to g8. Okay, I have an honest question for the chat. Do you think he's going to play f5? Because he sees how goddamn strong my setup is. Is that his next move here? Or is he just repositioning the knight and castling? You guys don't think f5 is in the cards? Oh, you do think f5 is in the cards. Aha. Uh -huh. hmm. Now, if we let him get a stone wall just like us, I mean, it's kind of lame. How can we fight it? How can we be prepared for this move? When we see f5, how do we want to react? We can't just go f5, guys, because remember, I want my pawn there to support my knight. I want my pawn there to support my knight. Also, if I play the move g4, this might work against my opponent here. But if you play the move g4, your opponent if they are worth their, any salt, they're gonna play h5. You cannot play h3. You will maybe play g5, and your light squares will be looking very, very weak. I don't mind g4, but I don't like move h5 in response. So, we're gonna castle. We are gonna castle to start off. I said start off. There's more coming. Knight to age six. Wow. What development from my buddy here? It's time for 95, right? I mean, I don't know what my friend is up to over here, but uh, got to get that knight in there. And as usual, we'll take this way. You guys already know. Now, our next move is very likely the move e4. We have to remember one trick which seems common. After e4, pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes e5. It's like, where is this move coming from? Now, in this position, the king's in the middle. I could follow up with queen b5, knight c6, you know, maybe take on b7, but that's, 
That's a move on the queen side. We don't play moves on the queen side. <laughs> we don't do that stuff around here. I don't play that. Boot this knight out of f5. That is far too strong of a square. Get lost, boy. Knight c4 into d6. Dropping the queen to threaten f7. A lot of good ideas here. Now, he's gone over here to h4. Let's have a look-see. This move will probably encourage castling. And then I can play knight e4. Knight e4 feels a little better than knight c4. Just a tad. Um, because it also threatens bishop to g5, which I love. So let's do this. Um, castling looks requisite here. For some reason, it, it I, I feel like... Yeah, let's go here. You know, queen g3, bishop g5. And I particularly like this move instead of this move because I like going to the king side. Like, the, the king side squares look very tempting here. Queen g3 or queen f3 both look pretty good. Go here for now. Bishop g5. Maybe queen h3. Yeah, so he wants to trade queens. I think you guys can appreciate that the answer is no. But the reason why I was happy going queen g3 was I was expecting, you know... If you go queen there, you're actually walking into potentially your own queen trap. That's right. You've trapped yourself, my friend. Knight on e4 facilitates everything here. It's just a great square. Way better than knight c4. So although knight c4 is very tempting... I much preferred to clear it. And look at this bishop. It starts out as the worst piece in the stone wall. But then somehow it always becomes a beautiful, beautiful piece at the end. Bring the knight to e4. Again, such an operative square here. Now, if he doesn't play the move f6 in general this game... I think he's on the way to a loss in not so many moves. Okay, maybe the idea is c5. Respect, respect. Let's bring our rook up to maybe double, whether it's here or use the h file. All right, so he's attacking my queen. I think we'll just step aside and hit the knight. Now, g5 is seriously risky. Um, okay. Risky, but would have been better than that, unfortunately, for him. Now I know I'll be winning by putting literally any piece on f6. Because if I get him to play this move, he will be getting made. <laughs> it's a guarantee. So in situations like this, you can just kind of like throw a piece in there. Doesn't matter what piece it is, it will result in good things. Let's bring our rook over. Some ideas here. This is a sack sack mate kind of position, that's for sure. Takes, we all wish we could play, but for the moment, it's not delivering mate. Brooke there. All right. I'm going to run.
Damn it. He couldn't quite keep up with me. If he did, he had his win there. It wasn't much I could do. I mean, we tried our best, but I credit him not only for being resilient, but for playing this move. It could have been Rook takes A2. And then I was ready to send it, bring this pawn up. We had some force mates. But Rook B4, great move. Okay. And then, of all the moves here as well, Rook G8. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's actually a great move. There are some ideas of him getting mated here as well. They'll take some time to develop. Probably weren't going to happen this game, but... You know, he stayed alive and played Rook B4, played Rook G8. These moves aren't the best moves, but they stop the queen sack mate. Now, of course, if you're if you're really looking to KO, G5, queen G5, and rook takes mate, be my guess. But if you were trying to get the queen sack to work, this guy is the worst opponent on chess.com for you. He stops all the fancy mates. He might not be playing good moves, but he stops all the fancy mates. No, he was, uh, he was a resilient player. But the stone wall is effective yet again. These pieces stop the knight from getting e4. These pawns support knight e5. Once we go knight in there, e4 is often the next move. Castling. It plays itself. Wow. Look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another stone wall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.